coming this morning. My name is Carson Tidener. I am the Reverence and Adult Services Programming Librarian. There's a lot of words to that title. Here at the Bennington Free Library. We are very, very appreciative. And it's a long time coming <laughs> to get um, Paula Camperman scheduled here from the um, Bennington County Solid Waste Alliance. She is the Outreach Program Manager. She has lots of goodies. She's magnificent. And more importantly, a lot of really great information. I want to say thank you to Cat TV, who will be filming. Fortunately, they're not filming my intro, which I found either. Um, restrooms are on the first floor, and Paula's in charge. Thank you. Really glad to see so many faces. Yes. Good morning, everyone. As Carson said, I'm Paula Camperman. I'm the Outreach Program Manager for the Bennington County Solid Waste Alliance. That's a lot of words, but essentially what it is is your waste management entity for the area. We're one of 26 across the state of Vermont, which is essentially formed locally about how to manage the materials management plan that the state of Vermont has given to all of its residents and businesses and institutions of managing solid waste. So here locally, we have 13 towns as members of the solid waste entity known as BCSWA. And that includes pretty much all of Bennington County. And a couple towns in and out um, either became part of our organization or joined another one outside of the county. So we're glad you're all here today to learn about recycling. I'm going to go through all of the recycling programs available to you locally that we know about today. And then at the end, We'll answer all kinds of questions that you may have. So I hope to leave enough time to get yours answered if you have any. And if you've got items you brought to get queried about what to do with, I'm happy to answer to the best of my ability <laughs> about where it goes. Okay, so I laid out three handouts on your chair. Um, if you come in late, there isn't a handout by the door. But it is something that I also will reference for the audience at home because they're following along and I'm going to make sure that the graphics are available for them to access. So. Um, the first one we're going to discuss is the Waste Not Guide. This is essentially Vermont's snapshot of the solid waste management and how to recycle in Vermont. So quickly, it's categorized by curbside or tra uh, transportation recycling, which is all the things that you put in your blue bin. So think newspapers, periodicals, uh, cardboard boxes, flat fold uh, boxes like this. You have um, aluminum in tin and cans. You have plastics numbered one through seven. You have glass. Uh, and pretty much that's just about everything here. Uh, there are things that don't belong in there that seem like they should. So I'm going to try to clarify that today. Uh, first and foremost, plastics which are everywhere, unfortunately, and most of it is not recyclable. But there are a few items that are recyclable and actually are of value to your hauler and to the transfer station. So keep in mind, when you see a plastic, it's going to have a triangle at the bottom of it or on the side, and it'll have a number in it, and it'll be numbered one through seven. That material is collected in bin, but really there is only markets for numbers one, two, and five. Number one is like your water bottles. So think of any of the water bottles you have, the single serve ones, 10, 12, 16, 20 ounce bottles. Those are clear plastic that can have the top screwed back on and go right in the bin. The number two plastic is something which is hard, dense plastic. Think your laundry detergent bottles, milk jugs, uh, that sort of thing. That is um, HDPE, hard density polyethylene. That can go in the recycling bin. The other item, number five, which is a, a rigid plastic, but it's more soft. Think yogurt containers, cottage cheese containers in their lids. That's number five. That's polypropylene. That can go in your recycling bin as well. There are markets in existence that buy the stuff by the bale when it's baled up in Rutland at the materials recovery facility and sold off. So that is something that is definitely recyclable. Okay. Numbers three, four, Six and seven, there are no markets for. You can recycle them in the bin because they'll take them, but they're, they're not going to do anything to sort it out for trash. Uh, so it is something to keep in mind. If you find that your recycling bin at the end of the week is getting full and you have to sort through what's really recyclable, those are items that you want to keep in mind. Okay? Paper. Uh, paper, anything that is in the office, in your periodicals, uh, newspaper, all that is recyclable. 
keep in mind what I try to do is capture even the smallest pieces of paper, which can be stored inside a larger envelope. So if you have a little shopping list left over, or I've got some uh, coupons that I've never used, <coughs> different smaller pieces of paper, I just throw them in the envelope, tuck them in, lick it, seal it, stick it in the recycling bin. It becomes pulp and is viable and useful for recycling paper. The metal what about, yeah. Yeah, and it gets sorted out. They, they have magnets and it pulls out all that. Other stuff that doesn't belong. Okay. Uh, other types of paper, which can be kind of confusing, is you get padded mailers that have a paper outside and a bubble wrap inside. That is trash. Just try to reuse it as many times as you can before you discard it. So that has just one time, one time on manufacture at that point. Uh, the biggest talk we have around the holidays is gift wrap because it's everywhere and everyone likes to see it in the stores and massive rolls. Unfortunately, if it has any kind of um, snaz to it, so it's got a little shine, some glitter, um, has a mylar or a silvery texture or look to it, it's not recyclable. If it looks something like an oversized magazine page, that's recyclable. The bows are not recyclable, so don't put any of the bows in. In fact, if you want to use a bow, try to use reusable ones, and year after year I use the same bows in a different formulation. So, um, in fact, I <laughs> trained my family in which they gently remove the wrapping paper and then I roll it up and stick it inside a tube of existing wrapping paper and I use it year to year and I just cut it down and it gets a little icky on the ends from tape. It gives me kind of a joke, mom, mom the wonk, you know, has to do all that. So, uh, you'll get sometimes carry out, take out containers that um, look like, oh, they should be recyclable. Well, in most cases they are, because they have other resins added to them, um, in some cases this crosses over into compostability as well, because you'll have cartons that have a coating on them that um, look like they should be compostable because they look like they're made with natural fibers. But a lot of the resin coatings are added to uh, create leak barriers so that the food doesn't spill out or leak in your car or wherever before you get a chance to consume it. So in this case, here's an example of this is supposed to be compostable, but it doesn't have any uh, certification on it. And to be fully compostable, it has to be BPI certified compostable. That is a independent certification organization that certifies that the material will only, not only break down in a composting facility for the requisite number of weeks under the conditions that a co commercial composting facility has, but also has um, no uh, PFAS or other what they call forever chemicals. These are chemicals that uh, do not break down in the composting process and have been known to cause cancer. So if you think about it, if it ends up in the composting process, the compost is then spread over beautiful ground and then it sits in the soil forever. So we try to avoid that. So anytime you're using compostable serveware materials, make sure they're BPI certified compostable before you add them to any composting bin. I kind of went off on a tangent there, but that's important to know. Now, the that, other thing Would that is, say BPI on it? Yes, okay. and yes, and there's, certain, there's tens of thousands of items in the marketplace. Okay. Another thing that a lot of people don't understand is that black plastic is not recyclable, regardless of the number on it. It could say a number two, number one, number five. Oh. This is a number one, which if it were clear, would be recyclable. This is material that can't be picked up and scanned in the, in the uh, recovery facilities that are processing recycling. So unfortunately, it goes to the trash. So get ahead of it when you can and avoid grabbing product that's in plastic recycling or you know, nudge your restaurant that <laughs> provides you your favorite meal with the black base and the clear top if they do that. I'm just like, I love you guys, but can you move away from this? We can't even recycle it, it's just trash. That's meant you get expensive on top of this too. So, um, so that going on forward, you have cardboard. It's important to remember that cardboard is a very viable commodity. As we know, we've done a lot of uh, learning over the pandemic in which everything was sent via mail <laughs> to us for a period of time. And so cardboard, granted the prices go up and down, it is a commodity. So you wanna make sure it is recyclable. So if you have such a pizza box, a pizza box is highly recyclable as long as there isn't cheese stuck to it or other food items. Grease stains are okay because it, in the totality of a large bale, that little grease stain is not gonna measure up to any kind of contamination that's worthwhile. So if you have cheese that won't come off, just cut it out. <laughs> Even if the box is not complete, it's all right. You're gonna still have some good cardboard there to do uh, to recycle. 
uh, toilet paper tubes, those are always recyclable or reusable, and things like this where you might have uh, bits of part that are together. This is recyclable, this is, but just keep them separate because they're two different ideas. That has a shiny coating on that. It's just paper. It's Even cardboard. The shiny coating is it's, it's just paper. That's okay. Yeah. You tear the paper off if you want and leave it on. It'll, it'll work through. Um, one thing that is quite confusing to people are containers that are multi-compositional, which means they're made of more than one material. Unfortunately, in Vermont, there has not been a market established for milk cartons. So any kind of cartons, whether or not they have a screw top or are made with a mylar liner like the uh, um, uh, Tetra packs that you see, the 32 ounce kind of elongated square packs that holds uh, plant-based milks and, and stock, chicken stock, uh, those are not recyclable, unfortunately. So um, if there's a purveyor of plant-based milk that you're using and they, it comes in a plastic jug, get the jug, at least that's recyclable even if it is plastic. Um, I even had a conversation with folks at the Carton Council at a trade or a conference I was at last month, and they did say they are working hard to try to build a market, but it's going to take time because they need a processing plant. There is one that's coming online down in Connecticut, but it's going to take time. So don't don't wait for that. Just put it in the wastebasket for now. Um, okay. The other thing, uh, glass is fully recyclable. It is. Um, pulled out by a rail car up in Rutland where we process um, the recycling, so make sure it gets in there. When I say glass though, it just means consumable drink containers. It does not mean plate glass, your old carafe or your leftover orb of something of a terrarium, don't put that in there. They just want glass uh, beverage containers and, and other food consumption. It, on wine bottles that have a metal Take yeah. that off at the top. Or if you, you it if it's easy, yeah. If not, don't don't cut your hand up trying to do it. They work through with all that because they know that there are rings around bottles, all, all yeah. kinds of matter of stuff that gets put on there. So uh, glass is what they're after. Uh, let's see, tin cans. Uh, a little little pro tip I tell folks. I've got the wrong can here. Pretend I'm holding like a can of beans or soup or something that has a taller side. Uh, you can take lids or smaller pull tops or um, tops to soda bottles, beer bottles, the metal caps and stick them inside and crimp the top over. So you just like hold it, squeeze it together and crimp it over. That will hold the caps in there and then they are recyclable. Because you need to make sure that the recycling that you put in the bin has a minimum measurement on two sides of two inches and a maximum of two feet. So those bottle caps normally would fall through. When you take them apart from say your root beer bottle, your beer bottle, that pop top, that you may pull off. You can stick them in the can and fold them over and then um, that recycles. How would you fold that can over, please? <laughs> um, well, I can do it with this. Just crimp it together and then fold it over. You use a pair of pliers if you're not strong yeah, enough. this is the thing. Yeah, oh, just the pliers. They don't work. Just use the pliers. Okay. You know, just okay. fold Thanks. it over. Find a, a brute somebody around to help you. <laughs> so you shouldn't just throw the whole tin in with the cap in it. No, you have to. You need to put them in to close it because you don't want to let it loose. You want it confined with the metal can itself. I'm going to try and hold all questions to the end so I can get through the presentation because there are going to be all sorts of things that pop up. So um, the next thing that we talk about is aluminum <coughs> foil. So we're talking. You know, you got your lasagna pan. This is a little. This is from Chipotle. <laughs> um, this is all highly recyclable, but I encourage people to curl it up into a ball because the tipping floor is where this material is dumped from the big trucks that collect all the material from the transfer stations and the haulers, is this vast, huge warehouse that has a lot of air flowing through it by the sheer nature of its design and what happens is this stuff becomes airborne very easily. So what we ask people to do is crumple it up because then it gets more density and it's not so apt to go around. This I just pulled off my counter. This is my foil ball that I build from the beginning and I hate to admit it, most of it is foil from chocolate bars. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't use a whole lot of aluminum foil in the house. The one I use is probably to cover or heat up rice or something and it just gets used over and over and over again. It sits on my microwave. And, so I just take it, and it doesn't matter what color foil it is, okay? So just all foil, just 
put it in a ball, and then toss it in your bin. And that way, it is something that just goes around. Low water is infinitely recyclable. Just want to make sure it's clean, not got your lasagna from last night all caked over it. So, so aluminum foil, you should rinse it off. A little bit, yeah. You don't if want food on it. Yeah. Yeah. There, you right. should rinse it. Yeah, yeah. Um, typically, all, all recycling should be clean and dry. Keep in mind, you know, a peanut butter jar that is half filled with peanut butter is considered a contaminant. It is nothing that the recycling facility wants to see. If you can rinse it out, fine. I usually just set some hot water in it, let it sit in there, and then I, I scrape it out with a scrubby and it comes right out. It does not need to be pristine. 50 gallons of water to clean one jar of peanut butter is not energy efficient. So what we try to do is just get folks to understand, you know, whoosh, swish it out. That's all, really. Um, and it also makes your recycling bin smell better. <laughs> uh, things that people think are recycling um, can be very confusing and what we try to do is help people understand that there's some sources that we have for recycling that are otherwise contaminants if they land in the blue bin. So for an example, plastic low density polyethylene. This comes in the form of the plastic bags that have been banned in Vermont, but they still kind of are around in different fashions. We have bubble wrap. This is case over wrap over some uh, paper towels, um, padded mailers from Amazon, cereal box liners, all that matter stuff is low density polyethylene that is highly recyclable through a public private partnership with Trex Corporation and grocery stores across the country. So when you go to your next time you're in Bennington, you go to Hannaford, you go to Price Chopper, you go to Aldi's, that's another program that's the same material that's accepted. You go to Tops um, and um, there was another store, Shaw's up in uh, Manchester. They collect all this material and backhaul it through their warehouses and down to Trex Corporation who uses it in their decking manufacturer. So it is really good stuff, it is really getting recycled, and it is low hanging fruit as far as I'm concerned. Because it is everywhere, I think it goes case wrap around um, a set of bottles that you buy. If you have produce bags that you buy by the pound, say, the thin bags that you pull off, or the bags that you buy your apples and oranges in, that is all material that is recyclable. Where if you get a newspaper delivery, it comes in a sleeve. Dry cleaning bags, uh, cereal box liners, as I said, salt pellet bags, wood pellet bags. And if you are really fastidious, they will accept the bags from potting soil and mulch and in the springtime. But you've got to be good about getting that stuff off. They don't want it with you know, junk all over the inside of it. They get very angry about it. So they, my handout to you that talks about it, which we'll go into uh, as well, is um, very good at explaining what doesn't go in and they include the mulch in the soil bags, but they say they will take them. They just don't let everybody know that is not thinking about cleaning out the bottom. So turning them inside out and really dusting them off. On salt pellet bags, you want to cut the handles off first. Um, at any time, uh, a zipper bag, like for the Ziploc food storage bags, just pull the zipper off. The food storage bag itself is highly recyclable. In the, uh, the bins at the grocery store, not in your curbside collection or at the transfer station. This actually gets caught in the machinery at the, the uh, MRF or Materials Recovery Facility in Rutland and people have to go through every few days and cut it out with large knives because it literally just jams in the teeth and it doesn't do the job it's supposed to do and it never makes it to recycling. So, uh, so think again, this stuff, just cut out the uh, shipping label or pull it off before you put it in the bag uh, or use it, reuse it for packing material which is what I do. Uh, let's see, not recyclable in any way, shape, or form. I bought two sets of bamboo utensils that I keep in my car, I keep other places that I use whenever I uh, get takeout if I need it, and that way I say, no, you don't need your utensils. Same thing if they're black, it's just trash, unfortunately. Uh, so keep in mind when you're using the rule of minimum two inches, maximum two feet, that applies to large items as well. So if you get a big box shipped to you, be kind and cut it down where you can. Um, uh, for our Facebook page, I post <coughs> no-nos out there that I see when I take my morning walks and I'll always find somebody that does, you know, gets an appliance box and they neatly fold it like in five 
four different folds and then shove it down in there. It stands like six feet tall. And a machine cannot pick up the, t the tote and turn it over to put the box into it. It's just impossible. It's, it does that. Now, the other thing that doesn't belong in your recycling bin are textiles. This is a ratty old t-shirt that we use for cleaning. But it does have life elsewhere. They have collection bins around the county that are run by um, Impact Apparel. It's an organization out of New Hampshire that also has um, offices in Latham. They're scattered all over. They're usually green or white bins that you may find. Um, our website, bcswa.org, has a listing of all the drop-off locations for all of the textiles. So uh, we ask folks to make sure that they're clean and odor-free. So the material that you have, that's, it can be used in some other ways. These ratty old t-shirts actually develop new life in which they cut them down for rag programs for commercial entities that use them in um, heavy industrial work. Uh, they're also used for, uh, they grind it up and use it for upholstery in car seats. So it does have life afterward. Um, what they don't want is children's toys, um, you know, household goods, and bed pillows. So if you've got like an old comforter, great. Old clothing, great. Um, Check out their website or our, our website, and they'll have a breakdown of what items. Some do accept jewelry if you put it in a small bag that's ziplock shut. If you want to donate that, right, because they do use it and send it also off to developing countries that need uh, clothing. So uh, let's see what else we got here. The next section I'm going to go into is special recycling. These are programs that are supported by uh, partnerships between industries and manufacturers to get items out of the landfill. And this is the symbol that the state uses to identify these types of recycling programs, okay? This recycling program is to get some of the most toxic items out of landfill and shepherd it back into some form of recycling or proper disposal so it is not um, harmful to, to um, the folks at transfer stations and um, the waste management facility. So the first one we see is fluorescent bulbs, which are slowly being phased out of Vermont altogether. So right now, the um, compact CFLs, the, the little twist lock type bulbs that we have, those are no longer being offered for sale and distribution in Vermont, where they shouldn't be. So let your store owner, if you see one, know that they're no longer to be sold. Coming January 1st, the four-foot fluorescent bulbs, which usually power a lot of uh, fixtures in more commercial facilities and their workshop lights, those are being banned from sale and distribution as well. Materials like that are um, noted when they have a CG um, in a circle on the bulb itself that indicates that it carries uh, mercury, which is, as we, I would imagine you would know, is very... Um, uh, injurious to adults and children and animals and you don't want to be around it um, and you don't want them to break. So what you do is you take those bulbs back to either your transfer station uh, or they have, we have a number of retail locations that accept them back in quantities up to 10 a day and just bring them unbroken to these facilities. Our website at BCSWA has the list of all the retail locations and transfer stations that accept the pro, uh, participate in the program. Sadly, Northshire and um, Sunderland uh, transfer stations stopped accepting the bulbs this year, so we are too bad. But there are plenty of other retail locations in the same area that do also collect them. The second item is paint. Paint is something that we're talking about uh, is through Paint Care is the name of the organization that is a uh, corporate uh, sponsored take back program that is through uh, retail locations all throughout the state, including Sherwin-Williams um, in Bennington. There's also Abishan and Miles Lumber in Arlington. This material is taken back year-round in quantities up to five gallons a day, and it is just architectural paint. So you don't want to have spray paint, boat paint, auto paint. Those are not part of the program. Things that you put on the wall. So that would consider oil-based or latex, um, and a lot of other um, oil and uh, latex-based products. Our website has a full list of all the products that are included, as well as those that are not part of the program. Um, that is funded by an upfront purchase of paint that is purchased in Vermont to help cover the cost. It doesn't yet, but it's getting closer to covering the cost. And it doesn't have to be paint by Sherwin-Williams. The paint just has to be in a liquid form in its original container so they know the formulation that the paint is made of so they know how to utilize it best. 
Um, the next program is e-waste and computers. Think um, televisions, uh, flat screen TVs, computers, peripherals, keyboards, mice. Uh, some of the programs have expanded into even greater things. Uh, Staples recently has expanded to collect everything essentially that they sell category-wise. So scanners, major printers, um, outside um, uh, things for uh, cable installation. All that material is collected free of charge at retail locations, some transfer stations. You just call or just uh, visit our website at bcswa.org and look under special recycling for e-waste tab. Um, batteries. We are in the enviable position of having the highest per capita recycling rate of batteries in the country. Yay! For us. Now, the batteries are uh, come in different categories and they're to be handled a uh, different way. So your standard uh, single-use alkaline batteries just can be put in a bag when you recycle. They don't go in your bin. You take them back to your transfer station or to retail locations that they have throughout the area. And that also, um, so you just place them in the bag so that they stay safe away from other things and they don't leak onto other things. And then you have other types of batteries that are lithium, which are these, think of small disc batteries. You see them in your key fobs for your car, uh, hearing aid batteries, other types of small devices. These are great, efficient, high-powered batteries, but they also have a higher risk for fires and other incidents you don't want. So what we do as a way to prepare them for recycling is at home you take two-inch packing tape like you would to make seal a box and you lay it down sticky side up and you lay batteries oh, a couple inches apart leaving enough to cover go over the top of the <coughs> so you're basically sealing them individually and that way the batteries never touch anything and they stay contact free and that isn't any problem same thing if you have um, rechargeable power tool batteries you want to make sure you put the cap terminal caps back on and even take them back on if you can uh, that way they stay on some of them are kind of loose so you want to make sure batteries are secured when you re or return them for recycling. Um, that material is then, um, there's a great video I just posted this week on our Facebook page about how lithium batteries are processed. It's really cool. There's a whole facility down in Arizona that re uh, recycles them. So um, the other items that are on this page that we talk about are items that are banned from landfill but often have other uses in ways that we deal with them. So for example, appliances can be taken back to transfer stations. I also know Foster's Cannery on Benmont Avenue accepts appliances for recycling as well. Um, used motor oil, you'd be surprised if your repair shop uh, might accept it as well for heating their own furnace. A lot of repair shops do. You might give them a call so that it can be used, along with other things like transmission fluid, gear fluid, things that have any combustible property. Um, tires we take back uh, to the transfer station and shops will also accept them that repair. Uh, clean wood, we want to, if you can't use it to construct with, you can burn with, um, create something out of. Uh, asphalt shingles are, uh, there was a program that may still get set up, it hasn't yet, but I believe the Bennington transfer station is accepting asphalt shingles. Is that correct, Scott? You know, they uh, collect it. They had a bin. They were starting to collect them, but there isn't a yeah, market yet. That's only, the only in bulk. Yeah, okay, okay. only in bulk. Right. So something. your contractor yeah. has to. He probably knows. He or she probably knows where to take them anyway. Okay. So um, some of the other things I just want to mention about recycling, and then I'll touch on a bit on uh, food uh, organics um, diversion. Part of the recycling program that is really helpful that's uh, starting up in more um, products is this howtorecycle.info. It is a labeling program that manufacturers of consumer products have started to put together in the last few years and you're seeing it on more and more products. Uh, it is helpful to help you understand whether things are recyclable, but they also, you have to be aware of whether or not there is a market in your community. So what I've tried to do initially at the beginning of this explain, especially with plastics, whether or not there is a market. Looking at a product that just has chasing arrows in a form of a triangle does not mean it's recyclable necessary, necessarily. In fact, in California, 
uh, they passed a law that says you can't even put recycling triangle form on your product unless you know there is recycling available to the consumer, regardless of where they live. So that helps the greenwashing effect go, hopefully, down around the communities. Uh, so this is just a great little website that I help people understand that's out there, you know, if you want to explore it. Uh, but truly, the guy that I gave you will probably do more to make sure that you understand it's just clean, consumable products. Now, food scraps, we know, don't belong in the uh, recycling bin. In fact, they're banned from Vermont, so we want to make sure that they're properly diverted. What we try to do is have folks understand that um, Vermont adopted the food hierarchy similar to what the Environmental Protection Agency decided to do, which is find the highest and best use of food scraps so that when you're done with it, it's not wasted. So if you have meal left over, you can try to find someone else who would benefit from enjoying that meal as well, rather than just throwing it down the drink, of course, unless it is spoiled. So um, I've got some tips over here on our table that might give you some idea about also preserving the food that you have by doing sort of like a fridge audit, making sure you understand um, the life of the food so it's not to be thrown out prematurely. Date codes are just that. They are just date codes. They don't give you an indication that the food is bad by that day or that it has to be uh, destroyed. It is merely just a code that is arbitrary. Uh, the dates Best Buy used by Celebi really don't have any organized meaning that is consistent. So. Use your nose, use your tongue, use your eyes. You know, stuff growing on it, okay, maybe I don't eat it. Uh, if it smells not so good, then you don't. But the, the idea behind it is try to avoid the, the waste of food. Um, Americans waste so much food. I'm not going to go into statistics because that gets um, tricky, but it is something that we try to have folks understand. Finding the highest and best use. If you can't give it to humans, you want to give it to animals. Is there a farm that you know nearby that would have some pigs or other livestock that would benefit from what you have available? Um, if not, then we um, take the food and compost it because we can then make it a soil amendment that is 20 times carrying its weight in water during a heavy rainstorm when it's in the soil. It provides viable nutrients to the ground to help things grow. And it's just put it back in the earth instead of in a landfill, which creates methane, which is 25 times more powerful than CO2 at creating our warming climate. So what we can do to reduce the amount of waste we send to the landfill is uh, better. I have a quick trivia question. Does anybody know where our landfill is? Which one? We don't have a landfill. We don't have any landfills except one up at Coventry, which is right on the Canadian border. So I just slept. Trash up there is really <laughs> very expensive, and food, obviously, is very heavy, which is why they put a food scrap ban in as well. It's one of the other reasons. Um, trash that is taken from uh, this area is probably trucked over state line. There is no burning of trash allowed in Vermont, so other states do permit that. So some hauling companies have permits to take their material over state line and go and burn it there for biofuel. Um, so what we try to do is just help people understand, take the food and use it up as best you can. Don't buy what you don't need. Um, the, as I said, the brochure over on the table does give information on how to properly store things in your refrigerator, make the highest and best use, and let things so, so things don't go uh, south too soon. The other thing I wanted to mention before I forget, um, this plastic bag is something that is not really intended for, you see it's paint, painted green, or it's tinged green. It is something that is actually compostable, but often you'll see it as a biodegradable bag. And if it's biodegradable, you just want to throw that in the trash because biodegradability is something that is requiring very specific guidelines under which something is going to biodegrade. It's a greenwashing, for the lack of a better word, in the sense that because we don't have we don't have a system set up to biodegrade things. So you don't want to take a biodegradable bag over a compostable bag or over a plastic bag because there's nothing you can do with it. So you want to take a BPA certified compostable bag if you're going to use one for collecting your food scraps. Okay. Um, let's see. Something to keep in mind. Overall, parting message I will have before I take questions is understand that all this material is a commodity. What we use how we use it, and then how we pass it on. 
trash really never goes away that we generate. So what we want to do is find the highest and best use of the materials we take through our consumption. So if we can use it and move it back into a commodity, think cans smashed down into a giant bale, sent off to an aluminum or a tin mill that will use it again, that's great. Stuff that can't be used again, whether it be a you know carton or something, we want to rethink when we are shopping how we can be better consumers <coughs> about making selections of the consuming package. I buy chia seeds. They come in plastic cartons. They come in these pouch things, which are not recyclable. Pouches are useless. I mean, they're great because they're lightweight. That shells nice. They can be pegboarded, all sorts of things, but they don't recycle. So the material that you have to choose from, you look at a plastic container. Well, I don't like that either because it's plastic, but then you look at a pouch. Well, that's not recyclable. I can't do anything with it. The plastic container, at least I can reuse over and over again. So it becomes a conundrum, but you want to think about that when you're shopping to help you understand that what we do with our dollars and our actions makes impact on our manufacturers as they decide how to package materials for consumption, because that has a lot to do. Also, you know, write your congressman if you're really passionate. That's important. So, um, I open the floor up to questions. I'll just go around. I'll just go around. I'll just go around. I'll just go around. Yes. What? Okay. Dog poop bags. Dog poop bags. <laughs> Trash. I mean, you, you don't unless you're composting with a um, green cone. That's where your feces goes. You don't want to put feces in composting. If you're doing it in the backyard, how are you doing? If you're doing the composting. You're putting it in commercial or you're you're talking about. I know what people do. They throw it in the woods. The bag and the, yeah, no. they throw everything. Okay, everything. yeah, unless that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, um, yeah, the waste bag, unless they're labeled compostable, are are plastic, so they're not something that has a uh, compostability to it. Unless it says BPI certified compostable, it's just trash. So the waste, the the dog waste and the bag are going to go in the trash. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So that's why you want to have a compostable bag for your pet waste if you're going to try and compost the waste. Who's next? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll show them around. Show and tell here. Okay. All right. This is a number one peat, fully re uh, recyclable in your blue bin. So as long as it's not what? Excuse, even though it's colored. Yeah, it's just black you don't want. No black. No black. The, oh, black. No black. No black. Because it can't read it. It can still read it. It knows. It can read. That's so no black sell. recyclable. No black. black at all, no matter what kind of... That's right. Yeah. Now, black plastic film is okay. When you're taking it back to the grocery store, you got a black trash oh, thing that got a hole in it. You can't use it for trash, but you can recycle it. You bet. Wow. Okay, let me finish this and I'll go yeah. back to answer your question. Okay, um, this is a number one as well. It's PET, same as this. Uh, that's fine. Styrofoam, banned in Vermont, but they can still put it on meat trays. It's trash, unfortunately. There's a couple beta programs in Vermont, but we're nowhere near them, so that are recycling. So, maybe some no for the styrofoam? No for the styrofoam. No, so that should go. No, so just trash. the trash. Yeah, just for the trash. And then this is another number one I could tell. Yeah, this is another number one. Okay. Ah, the black. Okay, but this is black uh, foil. So it's recyclable. You can really? wind it around my little ball here of chocolate wrappers, and it's recyclable. But I reuse these. I know it's probably had salmon in it, right? <laughs> From Hannaford. Um, number one uh, as well. This is number one, I think. Yep. So your blueberries are safe. You can recycle them. <laughs> you have to remove the labels off that. Uh, nah, that's okay. Don't, don't, worry, don't worry about that. Yeah. So. Excuse me, I have a question about that part. Yes. That we, uh, the labeling on the, on the bins outside my building said the pictures says no containers. I was putting containers in. No containers? Yeah. And so oh, wow. I was putting them in, and then I thought, oh, horrors. I, I've been putting them in. So then I stopped. And so it's quite confusing. No. Yeah, I'm not sure why they would say no containers. That's primarily what recycling is, is consumable food or 
yeah, I'm not sure. We'd have to see what that means, why I didn't say that. Unless it's, it's been mislabeled and it's a recycling bin that might have been dedicated for just cardboard. No, it's not. Okay, so I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> maybe they mean don't leave your food on. Except the phone, the styrofoam has to go in the trash. Can you come to me? That's the styrofoam is that white tray. Yeah. So your favorite solo cup, not recyclable. Don't look at this. Okay. I'll just move here. All right. Thank yes. you. Aerosol cans. Aerosol cans. It depends on what's in them. That's what I was okay. wondering. If it's like cooking spray, yeah. yeah. Spray it all the way out so it's completely empty. They want the steel. Take the, the little nozzle off of the cap. The cap is probably number five, which will recycle. So that's okay. Yeah. Um, uh, like Ray. Tops, it was Ray, like Ray. Ray. No. No. In fact, the guy left, take it to the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Facility, which we have which will be open uh, next May through October by appointment. It's a lovely little facility uh, located at the Bennington Transfer Station. It's materials collected one day a week by appointment. You get to our website, bcswa.org. You look for a little icon that lets you make appointments. And what you'll do is um, just pull up with your load. It can be anything that is on that list that we accept of materials. And it only is five dollars. You can take a whole pickup truck if you want, as long as you're a resident, not a commercial facility. And bring in through the line. Our dedicated team of experts will pull everything out. You stay in your vehicle, and you're on your way. You're no longer standing in lines at our events. Yeah, does that include so, the TVs and all that? No, no. Household hazardous waste. It's a okay. separate. That is. That is. Um, I didn't cover it here because it's a separate uh, entity, but it is material that is pesticides, pool chemicals, fire extinguishers, propane tanks, one in 20 gallons, um, solvents, uh, cleaners, yeah, I'll go, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, any phrase, turpentine, stains, varnishes, carburetor cleaner, creosote, rain cleaner, oven cleaner, paint strippers, thinners, solvents, oh, yeah. fertilizers. Yeah. You, you get the idea, it's what it is. Uh, gas treatments, kerosene, gasoline, degreaser, floor, metal, and furnishing polishes. Furniture polishes, polishes, latex, oil-based paint. We'll take it, but you're better off just taking it to paint care of the uh, Sherwin Williams here at Bennington. They take it year-round. Uh, driveway sealer, fire extinguishers, one in 20-pound propane tanks, fungicides, mercury thermostats, pesticides, pool chemicals. So all that material. As you go to our website, you can go through it. I'm not gonna worry about it now because you can't act on it till next May. So I'm just, you know, <laughs> I just wanted to cover it. Um, yes. Um, little receipts like you get from the ATM. I have read yeah. that that goes on. Thermal the paper, no. Yeah, just throw it away. Yeah. It's the just type of coating. Yeah, they don't really want thermal paper. Yeah. Um, yes. I want to verify that my tea bags are considered pouches, even though it's spoiled on the inside. Yeah, it's trash. It's trash. Yeah. Thank you. Um, people who are doing, um, who have, uh, like Estella will give you a bin for composting. Mm -hmm. Where, do they take that to the transfer station? Are you guys composting at the Bennington transfer station? Does that stuff? Yeah, because some of operates. A pile there? Yeah, they okay. operate uh, the transfer station as well as a compost commercial compost facility behind. So they will collect your load and take it there and process it. And they take it, you know, um, that is the composting facility for this area. So. so we've also seen a compost bin standing outside the building at the transfer station across from where the cardboard is. So could you bring your household scraps there if you don't? Yes, you may. Solo? Yes, you may. Yeah, they used to charge mm -hmm. a fee and they waived the fee now. They've done away with it, so you can bring it. Yeah. Okay. okay, by all means. Thank you. Yes. In composting, um, I've composted for years, but meat is my Bar. I mean, I, I hate to put it in because, in my bin, because, or pile, because animals will be attracted. Okay, you're saying meat? Is that what meat, you said? Meat, meat, bones. Yeah, meat and bones don't go in your home composting right. bin. Um, right. They don't, your, uh, the temperature of your bin does not get hot enough to break down and eradicate the pa harmful pathogens that are inherent in meat and bones. You can take them to a commercial composting facility, such as the one in Bennington Transfer Station, that will manage it and get the temperature high enough. Just throw it in the trash otherwise. Okay, now our church has a bin that seems to accept meat, and they, they have some 
it, are they, are they composting on site or is it being picked up no, by a hauler? Being, it's being picked up. Yeah, they can put, you can accept that, that's okay. You can put meat and bones in the composting bins that are collected commercially and taken to a large facility for processing. Yeah, definitely. Yes? So for years you were never allowed to recycle plastic with the tops on. Mm -hmm. I guess now that's kind of changed a bit. With but the beverage bottles, yes. Okay. Because they're so made of the same material now. So not all plastic containers. Like your spray bottle top, that doesn't seem like that would be recyclable because that's multiple forms of plastic in there. Um, I've heard mixed. I've heard mixed. Recycle that spray. Okay. Right. Well, most of them also have a spring in them. Right. So yeah. Okay. I would take it off. I've heard of leave it on because most of them, you know, but. If you have any doubt, throw it out. Just don't okay. put it in there. If and you're not sure what it's made of. So even like some of the containers too now have <laughs> a symbol on them as well. So those would be okay, let's say yogurt tops. Yeah, they're five. Okay. Yogurt tops and bottoms are five. So okay. they're made of the same material. So you can leave them on or take them off, doesn't matter. Usually when they get moved around and crushed, the tops fly off. In fact, it's kind of humorous to sit in the, the sound of the, um, uh, you know, Murph on the tipping floor when the bulldozer's moving all the material around here is pop, 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 and it's all the tops coming off the milk jugs and when they go over. So I just have to start one. Um, the, so, with the containers that we all recycle at, um, at the transfer station, so there's contaminants that people put in there. I don't know if this is a question for you or not. How much or how many pieces are inappropriate pieces in that container would cause that container to not be accepted where the town would be charged to pay for that? Um, I don't know. I've heard, yeah, and it gets, it's subjective, I think. Um, I've talked to the person who operates the Bennington Transfer Station and he operates a lot of different ones. He oversees a lot of them. And he says, um, it's, it's a matter of what they see as it's coming off and what they do is they'll just reject the load. So they don't get any credit for what is recyclable right. in the load. The whole load is then landfilled. How it's charged, I don't know. Yeah. But so they, you see a lot of people try to recycle, they'll put their stuff inside a bag and then they just throw the whole bag in. Yeah, the bag is a no-no. Right. You don't want to put any, you don't want to bag any recycling except if you have a, um, a lot of shredded paper that's been you know, put through a shredder. You have a very clear bag, not a white bag, not a black bag. It's gotta be clear. So if you have like a commercial shredder in an office setting or something, or you've collected a lot of it, you can put it in a bag. They see it in the load, they take it off and open it and just deposit it in a bin. They can collect that because there's, you know, they can use that. But it's not, um, anything should, nothing should be bagged, it should be loose. Also, if you have a box, and you're trying to jam all your recycling in it to be, you know, efficient with carrying it and then putting it in a bin. That just jams up the, the works. They want to be loose, so it can just float on a conveyor belt and just get, you know, sorted by hand or by machine uh, very quickly. So you want to make sure that your cardboard is broken down flat, not holding a lot of other materials. So different. Um, yeah, I usually use like cardboard boxes and I dump everything in and then until that. Box yeah, break apart. the cardboard box down. Yeah, it works. That's fine. It's just, I've seen people like, oh, this is great. I just shove everything in there and throw it all in the bin. You know? is, yeah. is just loose shredded paper okay? To no. no, no. As I said, all your small, you've got to have, like, they, they would just like to see a bunch of eight and a half by 11 going down the conveyor belt. So when you have little pieces, just put them in the envelope, in the envelope and seal it shut. And that's what I do. It could, it could be a business size bottle, it doesn't have to be a manila bottle, but that's what they want to see, larger pieces, so. So shredded paper could go in a paper shopping bag, or not? It, it could, if it's sealed shut. Sealed shut. Yeah, you don't want to end up having it fly out, because then it okay. becomes useless. A tipping floor is very greasy, so you see stuff just kind of stuck to the walls, you know, just all the wind and moisture. Yes, I'm going to try and get down now, come back. Uh, there was other people that had their hands on the lot. Thank you. I have a two-part question. Yeah. Um, I've read that you can't always trust the little recycling thing, that it's kind of greenwashing. The recycling thing? What recycling thing are you it's referring to? If it right. says... It's a symbol on a product, you mean? If it's on plastic, mm -hmm. and it looks like it's recyclable, but I've read that you can't always trust the number one and the thing, so... Well, I would trust the numbers because they have to identify okay. the, the, the numbers on there, identify the composition of what the material is. So you can trust the numbers. Yes. It's when they just have a, a recycling symbol and it's just got 
a recycling symbol, there's no number on it. Okay. They're saying, oh, okay, it's recyclable, but it really is. So the second yeah. part now, you try to get, say, mayonnaise. You try to get it in glass jars. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just can't find it. So you want to get rid of the plastic jar that the mayonnaise came in. Mm -hmm. It says one on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you're going to use a lot of hot water to rinse all that mayonnaise out of there. Well, I use a spatula. So your carbon yeah. footprint is going to contribute. Well, I don't use much water. I just use a sponge or, or a spatula to get most of it out. They're but it not has to be really clean. No, it does not have to be pristine. They just want the majority of the content of the material it's out of the mouth jar. The idea is about making it usable. If it's got half a jar of mayonnaise in it, it's not usable. But if it's relatively clean. But it hasn't, doesn't have to be absolutely sparkling. No, it doesn't have to look like it came to you before the mayonnaise got put into it. No, we're not looking for that. It's just, you know, you got most of it out and it's relatively dry. You don't want all the wetness um, of water. One, one, the second part, Home Depot used to take batteries. Yes. They don't anymore. Just power tool batteries, rechargeable oh, yeah. power tool batteries. So they take. The, yeah. I don't think the facility in Bennington takes batteries? Yes, they do. They You're talking do. about facility. The transfer station takes batteries. And you can just go up there anytime. Yeah. You don't need an appointment for that. Staples also takes batteries, I believe. Yes. Um, Good yeah. And Goodwill may take batteries as well. So The little um, lithium yeah. ones like hearing aids too? Um, a to Z, uh, Easy Way Rental also takes batteries. Who? Easy Way Rental. Easy oh. Way oh. Easy Way Rental. They also take batteries oh. as well. Uh, uh, the um, Foster's Cannery takes auto batteries as well. So, um, you had a question. Yeah. Yes. Um, I have a question about dog food cans. Mm -hmm. um, they are aluminum. Um, I just throw them in the trash. Is that okay? They're recyclable. So oh, they are. Okay. If you rinse them out, just put them in the recycling bin. They'll take them. Should you remove the paper? Of the trash? No, I wouldn't worry about the paper. They'll, if you want to, great. But it, they'll they'll manage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they want the highest I amount of recyclables. So if you don't recycle because yeah, you can't so get the paper off, that's not good. They want. Yeah. So yes. No. Uh, no. Anything. See, the little yeah. things that keep you up at night. So there's some, um, you know, cosmetic, but uh, moisturizer container you can't even get in to clean it. Yeah. I've, I've tried to like saw it off. And clean yeah. It. Oh boy. Bless your heart. <laughs> um, there. That's a specialty recycling, and it doesn't really. It's not part of this at all, really. Uh, there's a company organization called Terra Cycle, and they are an organization that works with uh, corporations to build recycling programs to take back items such as what you're talking about, cosmetics, specialty little pouches and things that manufacturers make that don't get recycled otherwise. Um, it's T-E-R-R-I-C-Y-C-L-E, or just look up Terra Cycle, and it will, you'll see a big, uh, website. They have over a hundred free recycling programs. A lot of them are sort of niche brand specific, but others carry entire categories in which like a company will host a recycling program collection for personal care items. So you can take all the little pumps off of moisturizing mm -hmm. bottles and tubes and, and toothbrushes and all different kinds of things you normally can't recycle and they'll take them back. You just download a ship label, they pay for the postage on a box that you send full of your little things that recycle. So that is something that is useful. Um, that is a great program. Uh, we've got a few more minutes. What other questions? Is there any ones on this side that are waiting? Okay. Yes. Uh, information first, then the question. Mm -hmm. We have one of those little scrubbers, about yay long, it's got a round thing on the end with a brush. We use that for our peanut butter jars and it works great. Yeah. Oh, and great. we use a spatula prior to that. Yeah. Now, my question, should you decide to accept it? <laughs> the stuff that goes to the Hannaford Price Chopper bin, uh, yeah. are they taking the former plastic bags that we used to use when we went there and when we carried the groceries home in them? Are they taking those? Yes. They, it's all the same low density polyethylene, number two and number four. The stuff that stretches. The, so there's some stores I still see out there, that, you know, takeout places that provide plastic bags. Right. And because I live over in New York State, so they're still using plastic bags to some extent, yeah. and I see it. So I bring it over to Hannaford, 
and my the store manager, Tim Cahill, loves it. He's happy to do it. In fact, he's even offered to host a, a bigger machine if we want, if we can get the, the other moving parts to come together. But yes, all that stretchy plastic um, is part of that program, and they get it in huge bags, and it goes back on their trucks, back to the uh, warehouse in at Hannaford, and they haul it by truckload down to Trex Corporation, I believe their plant in Virginia. Sounds well, good for me. Yeah. If you have an in with Tim, you need to tell him he needs a bigger recycling bin, or they need to empty it more frequently. Yeah. More often than not, well, it's jam full. I, I'm spreading the word, so the, the volume yeah. is increasing. I think bigger than the, the, the organization are accepting it, so that's what we've got to get worked out. But yeah, he knows. In fact, if you have a lot of it, he'll take it through your back, his back door loaded dock. So I tell companies that produce a lot of it in their manufacturing process contact him and he'll take it on the dock side. So, yes. Um, little bulbs like this. Uh, that's an incandescent bulb, it's just trash. Okay. Yeah. What about corrugated type egg cartons? Corrugated? Well, the kind that are yeah. pulpy? Like, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I reuse them. I mean, they're recyclable, but I just, I give them to farmers that lay but, but they eggs. are recyclable. Yeah, they are okay. recyclable. Yeah. Yeah. The plastic compost. ones and the cardboard ones. Yeah. They're all compost, too. Those. Yeah, you can compost yeah. those as well. Yeah, the pulpy yeah. ones, yeah, definitely. Same thing with newspaper, paper towel. But not the styrofoam ones. Yeah. Styrofoam, trash. Oh, uh, trash. Yeah. Uh, used diapers. Trash. Yeah, you can't, you, there's, the sanitation issue is, yeah, just, they're just trash. But if you're buying incontinence items, the plastic bag around them goes back to Hannaford in the bin and the rest is <laughs> it's, it's amazing, it's everywhere, this low, this stretchy plastic. Yes? Um, this isn't a question, it's, it's, and this isn't in your purview, but so on hard. the non-accepted list, yes. if the food companies didn't make us buy so much plastic, <laughs> Bingo. We didn't have this problem, and yeah. I don't know. I mean, we can do what we can do, but we're not the source of the problem. No, I know that. And you guys have all do a fabulous job with your efforts you're making. It is the manufacturer's responsibility to create material that we can get rid of safely and yeah. not cost us a fortune. We shouldn't have to be paid to get rid of our material. But that's a whole other subject. <laughs> yes. uh, would saran wrap be an okay product to put uh, in the clothes? Yeah, it, it, like it, long as it's clean and dry? Type yeah, product? it's clean and dry to have food on it. Yeah, you can put it in there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yes? So is all of the recycling that's permitted finding a home? I mean, I, I hear about uh, of so much recycling just being tossed. Yeah, yeah, and, and keep in mind, recycling in Vermont is different than recycling in Indiana, Pennsylvania, Ohio. So when you read nationwide articles about recycling and how it's a failed project, it's not working, it is in some parts of the country. They, especially during the pandemic, they just quit taking recycling. Recycling also is commodity-based. It is based on how much money a hauler or a waste management company is going to make when they sell it off. And the prices are highly volatile. So one, you know, one six-month period, they may be getting $180 for a bale of number two high-density polyethylene, which is your milk cartons, okay? And then all of a sudden, the money <coughs> drops out, and then they're getting $30. So they got to make up with it. So and it's a very volatile situation. And some markets, some municipalities, and some states shut that down because it costs more for them to collect it than they could possibly make to pay for the cost to do it. So that's how some of it fits and starts. It doesn't. It's not perfect. I just keep swimming. <laughs> that's all you got to do is keep swimming and know that you're doing your part. And it shouldn't all be our responsibility. But until we can shift that needle. It's going to be that way for a while. So yes, um, with cardboard, is that making difference if it's all like shiny versus? Yeah, that's a little bit amount. It's okay. It's yeah. okay to recycle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what about um, your freezer boxes? Those used to never be recyclable, but like have freezer. Oh, the carton that comes and holds the food. Yeah, it has like the white inside versus. Yeah, it, it's all right. Um, most people can put that in. You don't yeah. want to put. They um, sometimes tend to have a waxy. Kind of yeah, thing that's too. a minimal amount. Okay. You, what you don't want to put in is the freezer vegetable bags mm -hmm. in this program. It is not the right program. It'll say that on the back of your sheet there, mm -hmm. on the back side of this. Um, I think it says no frozen, no frozen food pack. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's a different type of plastic. Mm -hmm. Even on stretches, they don't want it. 
So everything has to melt down at a certain temperature. And if you've got other kind of material that's not melting right, it kind of messes up the whole mix. So that's why they really just want number two and number four, the low density polyethylene, as described on these items here. So, all right, I'm going to wrap everything up. I can stay for questions afterward, but I want to thank everyone at home for viewing this. And I encourage you to visit our website at bcswa.org. Visit the More button on the navigation bar. The drop-down menu will show you a resource library. You click on that, and all of the documents here that we're offering on our table and that we've given to participants today are there. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate your input. Thank you.